There it is, PHP 7 is finally out there after a long wait. It is in 7.0.0 general availability, we're out of the RC stages and we're ready to go. There's a couple of reasons, there's actually a lot of reasons why we should be excited about PHP 7 and I'm going to show you what it is all about. Let's have a look. Let's talk performance first. A lot of people are raving about the PHP 7 performance and rightfully so. PHP 7 uses the next generation engine, which was developed by the PHP core team and should be a replacement of the traditional Zend engine. It's supposedly twice or even three times as fast as the Zend engine on PHP 5.6. Now that all depends on who you're asking and what the agenda of that person is. Uh, we all know about benchmarks. We all know that you have lies, damn lies and statistics. Same thing applied to performance benchmarks. Let's start off with the main new feature. The main new feature in PHP 7 is the scalar type hints. We pass along an integer or two integers to the add function and we add these numbers. By default, we're in coercive mode. That means if a value is not the type that is suggested, but it can convert it to that type, it won't really complain much. So in this case, we add integer one and integer two, which would result in a value called tree. If we do that in the second var dump, it's a string, but it can be converted to integers. We've commented out a section here. If we comment it out, it will uh, enable a strict mode. And that strict mode will generate an error because the second one is not an integer as suggested. It is a string. Second feature is the return types. We can not only pass along scalar type hints, but we can give a return type or hint a return type. So we place a semicolon and then the type of value we expect. So what we're doing here, it, these should be integers, as I specified here, but I'm actually casting it to a string. In the default coercive mode, it won't cause any problems. See, it results in a three. But if we would enable the strict types, the strict type mode, Again, a type error, an uncaught type error, will be thrown. There's more to it. There's more in PHP 7. Anonymous classes is such a thing. We can instantiate a class, an anonymous class, on the fly and pass it on to a variable. So in this case, we have the foo variable that contains a new class. It's a class of a type anonymous, and it has the public function foo that returns bar. We do a var dump of foo just to see what type of object we have, and then we call the foo method. It returns an object class at anonymous, and then again, the output of the method, the foo method, which returns bar. Let's talk about an extra feature for closures. We have a class called foo, and it has a private property called foo again. Next up is a callback that returns the foo property of this, so of the this context. If we were to run this in PHP 5, we need to bind the object to it because there is no this context here. You bind it and then you can execute the anonymous function. In PHP 7, there's a quicker way of doing this. You just take your callback, execute the call method, and directly pass along the object and you are good to go. It returns bar twice. Let's talk about generators for a minute. Generators are interesting language constructs to perform iterations. Language construct yield that is used by iterators. So if we would iterate over that function, we would use yield to return those values. So in this case, it follows all the yields and it returns them. So if you do for each of the gen function and we take every value and assign it to the val, variable, it will echo that, that, or it will output that value. So in this case, we have yield one, yield two, and then it takes other variables or other yield values from a secondary generator. A generator is called gen two. It returns yield three and yield four. One, two, three, and four. So what I'm doing here is I'm creating a generator and that generator uh, yields one and two, but there's also a return value. So if we would iterate through this, nothing much would happen with the return value. The return value would be ignored, but we'll do yield one, yield two. But there's a new method in PHP called on that generator that will return the return value. One and two will be returned by the for each and by the separate call, we would get the return value of that function. One, two, and three.
Feature number seven that I want to highlight, no coalesce operators. Imagine we have this array. This array contains a key foo with a value bar. If we were to use ternary operators to do an if construct and return a value to a variable if it exists, and if it doesn't exist, assign another variable, we would do it in such a way. There is a shorthand to immediately return it. So we do array foo, double question mark, not set. So if the array foo is set and it's not null, it will be immediately returned. If not, not set, will be returned. Bar bar works like a charm. Feature number eight, the spaceship operator. Mind you, spaceship operators have nothing to do with spaceships. The, the operator itself looks like a spaceship, but in reality, it's a comparison method that returns an integer. If two values are the same, uh, zero is returned. If one value is bigger than the other, one is returned. If the value is smaller than the other, minus one is returned. Feature number nine. And feature number nine is actually a big one. It's both a feature and a backwards compatibility break. As of PHP 7, errors will no longer behave in the way they did. They behave similar to exceptions. Exceptions and errors both implement the throwable interface. If an error occurs, it is throwable and we can catch it with a catch construct and we can retrieve the message. It has a similar interface to exceptions. Feature number 10. We use the dir name function quite a lot and it returns the directory name of a given file or a directory. So if we would use user local bin and we would ask the directory name, user local would be returned. As of PHP 7, we can pass along levels. In the second example, we go to level 1. That results in the same result as the previous one where no level was specified. But on line 8, as you can see, we pass along level 2 and that will go to the second level of directory on the level up. So that means user will be returned. Not user local, but user. We go two levels up. And on line 9, we go, and as a fourth example, we go to level 3. So that means we go back to the root. So user local when no level was passed, user local when level one was passed, user when level two was passed, and the slash, so the root of the system when level three was passed. Eleventh and final example of new features in PHP 7. The integer division function or int diff divides two integers and returns the integer value. That is useful because if we would not use that function and just divide, let's say, 10 by 3, a floating point number would be returned. By calling the int diff function, the integer value of that will be immediately returned. And I can show you straight away. By using int diff, the integer 3 is returned. If we do a regular division without int diff, it's a floating point number. So 3 dot 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, and so on, and so on. Another key change in PHP 7 is the introduction of the uniform variable syntax. That new uniform variable syntax changes the way indirect access to variables, properties and methods happens, as you can see on the table on screen. It enforces a strict evaluation left to right, and that's a big PC break. Code that use old right to left evaluation will definitely have to be changed. And that was that. I hope you enjoyed the short overview of PHP 7. I hope you learned what PHP 7 can do for you now. It was not a complete overview. Uh, I just pinpointed and picked out a couple of features I like particularly, a couple of changes I liked as well. Go to php.net to see a full list of changes, new features, and backward compatibility breaks.